So the day has finally come. I was just outright called out by one of you out there in the YouTube universe for not being a real dividend investor. As per the comment itself, it read, I get calling it a dividend portfolio probably helps with the YouTube algorithm, but this is really a growth portfolio, obviously in regards to my portfolio, and you aren't employing a dividend strategy. I would just call it a portfolio update, all in regards to my last portfolio update video. Now my reply wasn't even argumentative because I can 110% totally see where this viewer is actually coming from. I mean, after all, my portfolio has plenty of growth oriented names within it, especially as my largest positions range from Apple and Alphabet to United Health and Visa, as well as the good old S&P 500 itself as my investment foundation. But on the other hand, not only do all but two of my holdings pay a dividend, these companies were purposely selected and added to my portfolio because they are growing their dividends by a percentage that I made a strict piece of criteria over the last few years, 10 plus percent. So today I am actually here to make my case to all of you, yes, the true judges of the dividend community, to first and foremost, catch your thoughts on what you think of my portfolio, but more importantly, how you would actually classify an investor like myself just after I state my case. Now, in order to really render a decision, of course, you're going to need to see my portfolio. So we're going to go ahead and jump on to Gitquin, which is how I track my portfolio. We will see I'm holding just just over $231,000 and position wise, my portfolio breaks down into the S&P 500 through Vanguard's S&P 500 fund, ticker symbol of EOO, which is in fact my largest position and layer one of my investment foundation. From there, I move to layer two, which is also a Vanguard ETF, but specifically focused on growth firepower. We're talking about tech stocks with this one. The fund itself goes by the ticker VGT. From there, I have my first and largest individual holding, which is Apple before this cash position is coming at roughly 12% of my portfolio. Now I'm using that to dollar cost average into positions over time. And then we get back into technology with Alphabet. Following Alphabet, I'm once again invested into another fund, which hopefully I'm going to be soon be selling out of. But this one covers literally the entire market as the total market index fund, ticker symbol VTI, again with Vanguard. And then I have some more individual stocks here, growth whales, if you will, with United Health as well as Visa, before I then tap into Tesla, followed by Realty Income and my other non paying dividend stock here, Amazon, to ultimately wrap it all up with some Lockheed Martin, McDonald's, and Coca-Cola. Okay, so not a huge portfolio, but it's at this point that I want to jump back on screen with all of you and ask you now to gather some of your thoughts just after seeing my portfolio and just get prepared to comment down below with a real in-depth comment. But also now, I want you to keep an open mind because I'm going to go ahead and present my case as to why I, Hari Gutman, am still in fact a dividend investor. Yes, even with my portfolio or oriented more towards growth. So first, bringing to the stand our good old friend Google. When we define dividend investor, we can see Investopedia, well, first gives us an idea of what dividends even are. So it's scrolling down here to some related questions. We're going to come to find that generally speaking, again, generally speaking, dividend investing really just comes down to a strategy that investors use to generate a steady stream of income from their investments vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, dividends. Furthermore, dividend investing primarily involves buying stocks and companies that pay regular dividends. So in other words, an investor with a strategy that involves strategically investing into dividend paying stocks for some amount of cash flow, doesn't matter how much, but moreover, just as an investor investing into companies that pay a dividend makes them a dividend investor. However, I won't just make my case there and stop. I want to go ahead and double down on a claim that I have been pleading with all of you to come to realize rather recently. Your investor profile is absolutely absolutely everything. You see your profile will dictate really what you're investing into or rather how long you should be investing, the yield range of the dividend stocks that you're actually picking, the quality or type of companies that you're looking into. I mean, this is going to dictate like I said absolutely everything about what you're investing into in your portfolio. Now, if we're all really being honest with ourselves, the only thing that matters as investors is the total return. So, does my portfolio focus on stocks like Verizon that boast immediate reliability and stability amidst market volatility with their six plus percent dividend yields, or let's say the British American tobaccos of the world, or even the realty incomes of the world, which I do in fact own this one. No, because 
As you can see, over the past five years and the longer span of time, these investments are all deep in the red. But I do focus on dividend growth stocks like United Health with a 1.5% dividend yield that topped over 115% worth of appreciation. And of course, as you saw in my portfolio, the visas of the world that pay less than a 1% dividend yield yet delivered through on over 68% worth of appreciation, which then presents a very hard question for all of us as investors to answer. Why are you investing? Truthfully, I want to know. So also be sure to include your why in your comment. Are you investing for dividend income right now to actually live off of? Are you investing for perhaps some extra income and if not let's say perhaps you're a younger buck with decades of time to go in the stock market why are you investing is it in fact to reach financial freedom much quicker or really driving up your net worth at the end of the day you see for me it is really just the beginning for myself as an investor as crazy as that is to say decades of time left to go as i showcase my portfolio for all of you to see on youtube this is me just saying i want to show you through my personal journey based on my portfolio and share that with you so you can understand that investing really isn't all too complicated but the key here is to recognize that i am in fact investing in only dividend stocks and it would make little to no sense for me to invest into higher yielding dividend stocks right now at this point at 30 years old when i don't really need the income right now. However, a part of my investment criteria for the most part is in fact that each of these investments that I'm loading up my portfolio with pay at least a sliver of a dividend because that means it's going to deliver through on some reliability and safety, which is what I like. Now, over time, being a dividend growth investor helps with the yield on cost matters. And more than that, if your only definition of a dividend stock or a dividend investor deals in some astronomical dividend yield percentage, I would highly advise you to hit the books or seek out some more words of wisdom from some of our real industry safety ages, whether it was Buffett, who never outright invested in a company for any other reason other than that company being a quality investment, or his right-hand man, Charlie Munger, but also the real greats out there, still kicking it, Ray Dalio, Howard Marks, and the Bill Ackmans of the world. This game of investing is played and won by investors who know themselves well, and I mean very well, and then from there invest accordingly for their own individual investor profiles. So, now I'm turning to all of you to ask you, what exactly makes a dividend investor? How do you define a dividend investor? Am I even considered a dividend investor or should I really begin to omit the word dividend from my personal description as an investor? And on that note, just before I close out, I do wanna leave you with one final thought. It's the, arguably the most important notion that I'm gonna leave you with in this video. If you are so caught up in the definitions you've already missed the point of investing and being an investor. You, me, and everyone out there, we're all investors. The scoreboard or your individual brokerage account is actually what matters at the end of the day. And as long as we stick to the golden rule of not losing money, followed by the second key rule, which is to follow rule number one, we will all increase our chances of succeeding financially. Dividend investor or not, good on all of us for simply being investors. With that, you know what to do from here. Scroll down, leave a comment with your thoughts. Don't judge me too hard. If you want to check out some of my mistakes that I've personally made over the years as an investor, dividend investor or not, discover them right here. Hopefully you can avoid them if it isn't already too late. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel. And until the next video, I will catch you all there.